Morning all. All right, so uh, some news of the day to start things off for your Wednesday, May the 17th. Starting off with uh, some, I, I don't know if this is surprising or not. I know there's people who, um, based on Mike Babcock's track record, uh, don't see why he'd be interviewed for jobs here and there. But Columbus has interviewed him apparently about the uh, coaching position they have available as their head coach. Uh, the New York Rangers, there's been talk about whether or not the New York Rangers might end up being tied to Mike Babcock as well. For teams that are looking for results, for teams that are looking to get over the hump, Babcock's seen as a coach that can get you there. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, the NHL, famous for recycling coaches, and that's where we're at again, it seems. Um, and I've talked about this before. I think there's a lot of really good assistants that could be good head coaches. I think there's good ones in the AHL. I think there's good ones in Europe as well. But NHL teams tend to go with what's familiar. Uh, now, coming back to Arizona. And the reason I'm wearing a Thrasher's jersey is simple. This feels a lot like the Atlanta situation from, from back when they moved to Winnipeg. Very, very similar. In that it looked like, you know, all Atlanta business as usual. And then all of a sudden, they didn't have a building to play in the following season. Uh, Winnipeg did. So the move to Winnipeg takes place. There was a sale that takes place really quickly. Uh, after that situation developed in Atlanta. And it feels like with Arizona, it's a similar setup. Now, Alex Marowello is unlikely to be interested in owning the team in the event that they move outside of Arizona. So, if there isn't a solution within Arizona, that probably would mean he sells the team. Now, the no side campaigned earlier. So what's been said in, in the wreckage of, of all of this, in the landfill that is left over now, um, is that the no side was financed strongly by unions. There was millions of dollars that came in, some of it from out of state, and they got out ahead of it. Basically, they formed the narrative early. So by the time that the team really put boots on the ground and was doing their best to, to get the yes vote out there, um, a lot of people had already made up their minds. Uh, a lot of people had already been given enough information that they felt like, hey, that's enough. Plus, the electorate of an older age and if people are told, hey, if you vote for this, it's going to make your taxes go up and they're on the older side, eh, they're, they're probably going to vote it down. Uh, so there are some options. There are definitely some options there for the Coyotes. Uh, and, and they're going to need to find new pollsters as well because internal polling had them winning by 10 points and they lost by more than 10 points. Uh, plan B could include the foot, footprint center. So I get this a lot of, okay, so could they share a building with the Suns? They could. Uh, new ownership in Phoenix may open the door to that, but then their tenants in someone else's building, they don't get all the fees. It, it becomes a situation where they're not making the kind of money they could. It's not a building designed with sight lines for hockey. It could very well be like what the New York Islanders went with. Remember when they went to Brooklyn? That didn't work out very well. It could end up being like that. Uh, Mesa is also possible. There are a couple locations in Mesa, Arizona that they feel like could be possible. And the reservation land on the 101, uh, the 101 corridor is there. But the problem is simple. Uh, the, the Tempe Entertainment District, that was two years in the making. They planned that out. They planned it out. That was like the plan. And now if they do go, let's say, let's say the reservation land, they say, all right, we're going to take the reservation land on the 101 corridor. Done. We're going to do that. Um, it's going to add to the time they'd spend at the Mullet Center uh, and this or a Mullet Arena. And, and that's not going to be something that flies with the National Hockey League, which uh, in individual owners are concerned about revenue losses out of Arizona. Uh, the NHLPA, not all that happy either. And then there's the other side of it now, too. There's a lot of uncertainty around this organization. It is going to be tough signing players. So up until yesterday, you could sign players and say, look, you guys come in. It's going to be a couple rough years. And then after that, this is going to be great. we got a new building coming in. This is We want you guys to be part of the building process. And you could tell with Arizona and the way that players were talking about things when they did their interviews between periods, after games, and all this, that there was definitely a belief of, okay, we're in this tiny building right now, but the plan is going to be great, and we're all here for what this plan's going to, to result in years down the road. Well, now you can't really sell them on that. That plan's fallen by the wayside. And so unless plan B was being basically brought about at the exact same, same time as plan A, meaning they would have to have uh, 
you know, at least offers signed and things figured out and, and, and a concept for what that new arena could look like. Unless they had that all in place, I, I just don't see how this necessarily works. Uh, and and I, I would think if there was a plan B that was really strong and robust, they would have brought it up last night. Uh, the president and CEO, when he steps out in front of the press, would have said we're disappointed, but we do have other contingencies in place. And we'll be going over those in the coming weeks and talking to you about it. And they didn't. And one thing that people need to, you know, pay attention to from the NHL's release on this is normally you would see a really kind of flowery, we still believe in Arizona, we're still going to stay, and there wasn't. There was nothing like that. So <clears throat> really, the, the NHL hasn't come out with that flowery, we're going to stay in Arizona no matter what statement, which is a change. That is the first time that I've seen that. Uh, when I saw that statement from Batman's office last night, I thought, you know, it, it looks like the NHL may very well be ready to pull up shop and move. Um, and again, Houston would be the most likely place for them to go. Big market. There's a building there. Uh, there's already been interest uh, in having an NHL team there expressed by people with money in Houston. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this summer plays out for the Coyotes. And they need to have a plan. Um, I would say by the time the draft rolls around, you've got some guys too that they've drafted, like for instance, Logan Cooley, who are not signed yet. You want to get them signed to get them in the organization. You need to have a plan going forward. Even if that plan is, so the team's going to move. You want to make sure that players know what's going to be happening rather than where we're at right now, where nobody really knows. And again, it feels like the Thrashers, because at the end of that season for Atlanta, we didn't know there wasn't going to be another... Atlanta Thrashers game that following fall it just very quickly things changed very quickly things changed there was a pivot and off to Winnipeg they go um so yeah for the Coyotes it, it might be done with their time in Arizona there's already the chance that they've played their final game in Arizona that that move could take place which of course would be just it'd be a shame you know you always want to have that chance to see your team off Winnipeg had that Quebec had that uh, certain locations have, but some haven't. So uh, we'll see. We'll see where it all ends up and uh, all that all that fun stuff. Uh, now on to happier topics here, and that would be the Ottawa Senators, uh, who are likely to, to decide on who the new owner will be next week. So no decision likely this week, but next week we will probably hear who the new owner of the Sens is going to be and what their plan is going forward. Of course, the new building is going to be talked about, where that new building is going to be. All that other fun stuff. So, yeah, that'll likely be decided over the next week. And you want to have new ownership in place going into the draft, going into free agency, for very similar reasons that the Arizona Coyotes would want to have some clarity in the coming weeks. Because when they get into the negotiation process with players, uh, July 1st, or a little bit before July 1st even, uh, they, they want to sell them on R8, so here's the new ownership and here's what the plan is. So that's that's really going to be a big part of things with the Ottawa Senators, I think. Um, and hopefully they, they make a choice here that, that really puts them on the financial path to making a ton of money. Uh, so interesting news regarding the Penguin search for general manager. Uh, they wanted to talk to Brad Tree Living, and according to Pierre Lebrun, the answer was no. The Calgary Flames have him under contract until June the 30th, and so they wouldn't let Pittsburgh talk to him about the new job. Now, the problem with this, if you're Brad Tree Living, is simple. Uh, if he does want to be a GM somewhere else this coming season, it's not likely. Because by July 1st, you would think every team would have their general manager situation figured out. Because that's once you've gone through the draft and you're starting free agency. Um, you want to have your new GM in place before the draft. And so this may cost Brad Tree Living any opportunity for this coming season, unless there's a team out there that doesn't make the move until July. But again, that seems kind of unlikely. So we'll see what happens, but, but Brad will end up, I would think he'll end up being a GM again in the NHL. I think he's a competent GM. There were some deals that didn't necessarily go his way over the last couple of years, but I think he's a solid enough GM that he'll get another chance. Uh, and so we'll see what happens. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. If you're a Pittsburgh fan, who would you like to see as the new GM? Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.